Are you ready, kids? Aye, aye, Captain! I can't hear you! Aye, aye, Captain! Oh! What lives in the ocean and moves through the sea? Great, Great ocean can play about! Great ever form and water bodies! Great, Great ocean can play about! They flush the notions of something you wish! Great ocean can play about! Then sit down and watch till the show is finished! Great ocean can play about! <laughs> we interrupt this program to bring you breaking news splash from current events. There is increasing speculation that something is slowly but surely changing within our world oceans. We have been in contact with our old friend, the North Atlantic Deepwater, who we have been looking to for many years regarding inside information about what's been happening in our oceans. We now cross live to the North Atlantic Deepwater. NADW, what's the sight? The winds of change are upon us. I'm feeling a lot less dense than I usually am. My NACL levels are dropping and I'm feeling fresher than I should be. What's happening to me? As you can see, we have a very interesting chain of events happening. To help us provide a clearer picture of what is happening, we have here with us in the studio oceanographer Dr. Julia Milani from the University of Waikato. So Julia, can you provide us with an explanation of what exactly is happening? Well, this appears to be some sort of strange phenomenon that is puzzling scientists everywhere. And we can only make predictions based on what we know. However, it is suggested that this phenomenon could have something to do with the great ocean conveyor belt and the four main water bodies changing in some sort of way. At the moment, the four main water bodies are the North Atlantic Deep Water, the Antarctic Bottom Water, the Antarctic Intermediate Water and the Central Water. The North Atlantic deep water has a relatively high salinity and also a high oxygen content. It is formed in the Greenland and Norwegian seas and it is the most common water type in the Atlantic Ocean, providing a major component of the thermohaline circulation. The Antarctic bottom water is very cold at around 0 0.5 degrees Celsius and also rather saline. It is formed in the Weddell and Ross seas when the cold surface water mixes with the saline Antarctic circumpolar water. It is the most dense water in the ocean. The Antarctic intermediate water has a minimum salinity and a high oxygen content. It is formed by convective mixing processes of the North Atlantic deep water and surface water at the Antarctic divergence, where it subducts below the thermocline and moves northwards. The central water has a large range of temperature and salinity properties. It is formed by the downwelling of water where it is pushed downwards at the doldrums. It penetrates the picnic line. As I have previously mentioned, these water bodies are an essential part of the thermohaline circulation and on a larger scale the great ocean conveyor belt. Now on the following map I can attempt to show you how the great ocean conveyor belt works. So if we start here then the cold, dense, salty water sinks down and moves down past the Americas. It then picks up salty, nutrient-rich water off the coast of Antarctica. The main currents then split into two currents. Half goes into the Indian Ocean and half goes into the Pacific Ocean. These currents warm and rise as they travel northwards. See here and here. These warm surface waters are then circulated around the globe, providing the Great Ocean Conveyor Belt. See here. I feel like if this has changed in some way, that it could really explain why the NADW is feeling different. Thank you, Julia, for that detailed insight of the current situation. We now have a clearer idea about what's going... Hold on. What's that? Ah, this just in. It appears the situation of fresh weather has gone. Let's try and cross now to our correspondent. The